Suppose you have some time to invest for simplicity, one hour, and you're planning to put a fraction W into studying for your online courses and the rest, which is one minus W, into watching your favorite YouTube channels. Suppose that one hour invested in studying for your online courses yields happiness of RS after one semester and that one hour invested in watching your favorite YouTube channels yields happiness of RC after one semester. Further, suppose that RS is random with mean 0.8 and standard deviation 0.15 and RC is random with mean 0.6 and standard deviation 0.2 and the correlation between RS and RC is 0.32. If you place a fraction W of your time in studying for your online courses and the rest 1 minus W in watching your favorite YouTube channels then the happiness return on your investment R is fraction of time invested in studying times the corresponding yield plus fraction of time invested in watching your favorite YouTube channels times corresponding yields. As seen a new variable R is defined using random variables RS and RC whose means and standard deviations are known. Here the mean and standard deviation of capital R are not given. If we know what portion of 1R you put in studying, in other words if we know what W is, we can compute them. Suppose that you invested 75% of your time into studying for your online courses, then what is your expected happiness? Let me write the question. The question will be, assume that W is 0.75, what is the mean or expected value of R? Let's find the expected value of R. R was W times RS plus 1 minus W times RC. Plugging the given W after simplifying we will have expected value of 0.75 times RS plus 0.25 times RC. We need to find the expected value of sum of variables. Let me recall the following property. Expected value of sum of two random variables X and Y is the sum of expected value of X and expected value of Y. Here you can consider this as X and Y. Then we will have expected value of 0.75 RS plus expected value of 0.25 times RC. To continue, let's use the following property. The expected value of B times X, the constant times random variable, is the constant B times the expected value of the random variable. Applying this property, here the constant B is 0.75 and the random variable is RS. We are going to have 0.75 times the expected value of the random variable plus similarly we have 0.25 times expected value of RC. We know that expected value of RS is 0.8 and expected value of RC is 0.6. They were given in the question. Then we have 0.75 times 0.8 plus 0.25 times 0.6. We'll get the expected value of R as 0.75. Next, let's find the standard deviation of R. Standard deviation of R is the square root of variance of R. When W is 0.75, R is 0.75 times RS plus 0.25 times RC. Let me recall the following property to find the variance of sum of two variables. Variance of AX plus BY is a square times variance of x plus 2 times a times b times covariance of variables x and y plus b square times variance of y. Furthermore, if you know the standard deviation of x, you can find the variance as the square of standard deviation of x. The covariance of x and y from the correlation formula can be written as the standard deviation of x times standard deviation of y times correlation of x and y. Similarly, variance of y is the square of standard deviation of y. Therefore, we can write the variance of ax plus by as the following. The 0.75 is the A, RS is the X, 0.25 is the B, and RC is the Y. Going back to the question, standard deviation of R will be 0.75 square times standard deviation of RS square plus 2 times 0.75 times 0.25. Then standard deviation of 
RS times standard deviation of RC times correlation of RS and RC plus 0.25 square times sigma RC to the second power. All we need to do is plugging standard deviations and the correlation given in the question. Then standard deviation of R is then we will get the standard deviation as 0.136953. In the first question, we found the mean of the R for the given value of W. In this question, we will find the value of W which makes the expected value of R as large as possible. Expected value of R can be written as expected value of R was W times RS plus 1 minus W times RC. Then we can rewrite the right hand side as W times expected value of RS plus 1 minus W times expected value of RC. Expected value of RS is 0.8. Expected value of RC is 0.6. As seen, expected value of R is a linear function of W. We can simplify right hand side. We have 0.8 times W, then distributing multiplication over subtraction, we have plus 0.6 minus 0.6 W. Combining like terms, 0.2 W plus 0.6. Expected value of R is given by 0.2 W plus 0.6. Expected value of R is a linear function of W. You know, since the expected value of R is a function of W, I can graph having W on x-axis and expected value of R on y-axis. When W is 0, the y-coordinate will be 0.6. This will be the graph. But W is the fraction of 1R. So it's between 0 and 1. When W is 0, expected value of R is 0.6. When it's 1, plugging 1 for W, you'll get 0.2 times 1 plus 0.6, which is 0.8. As you see, when W is 1, expected value of R gets the largest value. Therefore, answer to the question will be, W equals 1 makes the mean of R as large as possible. The last question is asking about the value of W minimizing the standard deviation of R. Instead of finding the W which minimizes the standard deviation of R, we'll find the W minimizing the variance of R because variance of R is square of standard deviation of R and the W minimizing the variance is the one minimizing the standard deviation. Because the standard deviation of R involves a square root function and we don't want to take derivative of a composite function involving square root function. Variance of R can be written as variance of W times Rs plus 1 minus W times Rc. Then variance of R is using the property is recalled earlier w squared times variance of rs plus 2 times w times 1 minus w times covariance of rs and rc plus square of 1 minus w times variance of rc. Here the variance of rs is a constant. It's a real number and we can find it squaring the standard deviation of Rs. And covariance is also a constant. That's the product of standard deviations of Rs and Rc and the correlation. When you multiply these three values, given values, you'll find a real number, so it's a constant. And the variance of Rc is also a constant. So we have a function of W. W is the only unknown quantity here. If you wish, you can plug numbers for the variance, covariance, and the other variance. But I'm not going to 
plug them into this equation since I don't want to have any intermediate calculations requiring rounding. Let's simplify the right hand side. So we have w squared times variance of our s plus if we distribute multiplication over subtraction here we have plus 2w minus 2w squared times the covariance plus if we expand this expression to the second power we'll have 1 minus 2w plus w squared and it's multiplied by the variance of rc. To find the w making this function the minimum we need to work with its first and second derivatives. The first derivative of the variance of r with respect to w is remember variance of r s is just a real number therefore it's 2 w times variance of r s taking the derivative here we have plus 2 minus 4 w and the covariance is the constant then derivative of 1 minus 2 w plus w square is negative 2 plus 2 w then we have the variance of r c let's find the second derivative of the variance so second derivative with respect to w is the derivative of the green function of w so it's 2 times the variance of r s plus negative 4 times the covariance plus 2 times the variance if you plug values for the variance covariance and the other variance you see that this function the second derivative of the variance of r is positive since the second derivative is positive the variance function has global minimum all we need to do is setting the green function the first derivative equals zero and solving for w so 2w variance of rs plus 2 minus 4w of covariance plus negative 2 plus 2w of variance of rc will be set to zero yeah, let's simplify the left hand side to solve to solve this equation we need to isolate the unknown quantity w on one side of the equation so we need to perform this multiplication here we also need to distribute it so 2w times variance of rs plus 2 covariance minus 4w covariance and negative 2 variance of rc plus 2w variance of rc equals zero we can factor out w so if we be 2 variance of rs minus 4 covariance plus 2 variance of rc equals the constants we have negative 2 variance rc if we add it to both sides of the equation we are going to have 2 times variance of rc on the right hand side then we have 2 times covariance if we subtract 2 times covariance from both sides we are going to have negative 2 covariance on the right hand side to isolate w divide both sides by the coefficient of the w so therefore w will be 2 variance of rc minus 2 covariance divided by 2 variance of r s minus 4 covariance plus 2 variance of r c then w equals 2 times variance of r c is the square of standard deviation of r c that is 0.2 square minus 2 times covariance covariance is the product of standard deviations 0.15 the other standard deviation was 0.2 and the correlation it was 0.32 divided by 2 times the variance of rs the variance of rs is the square of the standard deviation then minus 4 times covariance covariance is 
point one five times, point two times, point three two. Then we have plus two times variance of R C. That is the square of standard deviation of R C square of point two. Then W will be found as point seven zero two zero seven nine. This W minimizes the variance and the standard deviation of R. Mm -hmm.